Homework out. Textbooks open to page 105, and you had three problems to do on page 105, numbers 39, 40, and 43. Uh, these were quadratic equations, but the answers didn't come out uh, very nicely. Let's put it that way. They came out weird, where part of the answer was real, part of the answer was imaginary. What do we call a number that's part real and part imaginary in class? Complex. complex number. And so we're getting complex answers to these quadratic equations. Of course, an imaginary number in general class is simply the square root of a negative. negative. And when you have the square root of a negative, the first thing you ought to do is okay. pull out your eye and pull the eye out, it, pull the negative out front as an eye. Now, as we look at number 39, they gave us a q squared, positive 4q, positive 5. And if this were a negative 5 equals 0, if this were a negative 5, I could factor it. You know, 1 and 5, you can get a 4 from that. But when the signs have to be the same, that's a horrible 5. When the signs have to be the same, you're not going to be able to get a 4 from a 1 and 5. You get a 6. So it doesn't factor. So we've got two options for solving if it can't factor. What are those options, Audrey? Either complete the square or use the formula. Good. Either complete the square or use the formula. And which one did you do, Audrey? You think she completed the square. And what would we need to do to complete the square, Kendall? Um, you would take out the 5 as an Good, and so uh, that leaves an empty spot which we can fill. With a positive 4. Well, what we do on one side. So we're going to put a positive 4 over here as well. And then it's a PST that factors into a binomial square. So you have Q plus 2. All right, then what do I need to do, Michael? You got to take the square root, and that gives you q plus 2 equals i. Positive negative i. Good, positive negative i, because I put the square root symbol there. It wasn't there to begin with. If, it, if you saw this printed on a page, well, then there's an understood positive in front of it. When you put the radical sign there, there can't be an understood positive in front of it, because it wasn't there before. We have to account for both possibilities. The last thing we'll need to do here, Maddie, and where should I place it when I put it on the other side? In the front, because we always put real before imaginary in the complex form. So negative 2 plus i and negative 2 minus i, how many have those two answers? Excellent. Let's take a look at the next one, number 40. And uh, we have an x squared, positive 6x, positive 10, all equal to 0. Um, 5 and 2 can't give you a 6. 1 and 10 can't give you a 6. It's not going to factor. What might we do instead, Abby? Um, you can um, use the... Oh, you can just move it uh, complete the square. Good. Okay. So x squared plus 6x plus 36. Well, for now, let's leave um, the blank and kick out the... Oh, that would be 9 anyway, but negative 10. There we go. It's giving you that second chance. And she redeemed herself. She realized it's not a 36. You half n squared again. Uh, positive 9. Positive 9, which we'll put on both sides. Then I can do a, uh, make a... Binomial square. X plus 3 equals negative 1. All right, and then Brandon? Take the square root. You get X plus 3 equals negative 1. Then subtract the 3. So X equals negative 3. I get both problems very similar to each other, but some good practice with completing the square. Uh, how many got both of them right? 39 and 40, both correct. All right, and then you just had the 36. No, I. That wasn't a mistake. Forgot. No, when I moved the numbers over to complete the square, both I thought you'd be negative. Uh, so you had a 19? Yes. Okay, so you had uh, negative 3 plus or minus squared of 19, which is irrational, but it's still real at least, as opposed to complex. All right, questions on 39 or 40. All right, let's take a look now at 43. We had a negative 2y squared, yeah, positive 7y, negative 11 is equal to 0. And uh, two thoughts I have as I look at this. Brandon, my first thought perhaps should be it just looks different from every, most of them because, it's well, I mean, these were complete quadratics also. I mean, it's complete like the other <coughs> ones, but what's uh, what? The negative. the negative. I really don't like leading negatives. And so my first thought would be, change on the signs. of course, you don't have to worry about changing the signs here. That's my recommendation. Uh, my second thought is, I'm coming on the heels of completing the square very successfully and very quickly. It was very easy. 
Not so much. Thoughts? Here we'll want to use the formula. And this is where, what is the formula class? Say it with me. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I don't want my A to be negative. Because that gives me a negative denominator, which then I have to pull the negative out front or change all the, it's just weird. Save yourself the trouble. Make sure your A is a positive value. Um, we can take a look at the end and see what would we have done if the A were a negative, but it's really going to help you out if you make change all the signs. So what are my A, B, and C? It shows you how much your friends love you when they're willing to get out of their seat and go to the door with a smile on their face and let you in and greet you and say, hi, Genesis. So good hi, to see Genesis. you. Hi, Genesis. She's not even willing to get out of her seat. Hi, She's Genesis. Just... So good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Flies. <laughs> I'm happy to see you, Genesis. <laughs> Gavin and Brecken would be happy to see you, but they can't. Yeah, you're not allowed to. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, what is our A value here, Michael? It is 2. B? Negative C. Eleven. And when we plug in these numbers, what do we plug in for the negative B, Kendall? Um, seven. Plus or minus the square root of, what do I plug in for the B squared, Genesis? Uh, Just like, what happened? <laughs> 49. 49. And then it says minus 4 times A times C, or I'd like to think of it as a negative 4 times A class. Negative 8 times C, a negative 88. Or you can think of it as minus 88. It's up to you either way. All over 2A or just 4. But what is 49 minus 88 or 49 negative 88 going to give us here, Audrey? 49 minus 88 is 49. Keep this under greater absolute value. You had $49 and I try to steal 88 somehow. Uh, negative. negative 39, right? And technically it doesn't really work, but negative 39 all over 4. And the only thing we have to do now, class, is start pull out your I. Good, Kendall. And we get 7 plus or minus I times the square root of 39 all over 4. How many have these two answers for number 43? Questions on 43. Uh, okay. All right. How many did change the signs right at the beginning like I did? How many tried to work with the signs different as they were? Okay, let me show what that would have looked like real quick. Again, all of these signs that are different here, which means we have a negative 4, we have a negative 7, but here it's still going to be positive 49 when you square, and negative 4 times negative 2 times negative 11 is still going to be a negative 88 or a minus 88. So this should have all worked out the same, except for right here when you got your answer. Of course, you pull out the I. So if I divide negative divided by negative, that gives you a positive, right? And then here, positive by negative becomes negative. Negative divided by negative becomes positive. And now the division's done, but it's not customary to leave a negative positive. And it's the same answer. You want to avoid all that? Don't have a negative A. All right, questions on this? Yes, ma'am. Um, obviously on 40, how do you, because I did it the, um, the formula? formula way. Yeah. So you said A was 1, B was 6, and C was a 6, and C was 10. So you said negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 40 all over 2? Yes. All right, and then you subtracted 36 minus 40, and that gave you negative 4. And we know the square root of negative 4 could just be written. Well, square root of 4. Oh, 2. Right, pull out the i, then square root of 4 is 2, so 2i, right? So this becomes negative 6 plus or minus 2i all over 2. We divide this by 2 to get negative 3. Divide this by 2 to get plus or minus i. So you left it at negative 6 plus or minus i square root of 4 all over 2? Yes, I, and I, I wasn't... I figure out how to do that part. Right, just got to actually take the square root of 4 and get the 2. And then it would have been all good from there. Were you good on 39? Yes. All right. Questions at all on 39, 40, or 43 from the homework? All right. Anyone perfect on all three? I think a couple perfect people. Great. Must be cool. All right. Page 110 in your textbooks. Page 110. And you did numbers 18 and 20. Numbers 18 and 20.
All right, number 18. Um, it's a rational equation, but it's a single fraction equal to a single fraction class. We call that a proportion. To solve a proportion, we just cross multiply. So we got the x negative 7 over x positive 36, all equal to 2 over 5x. When we cross multiply, what does the equation become, Abby? 9x squared minus 9 equals 3x squared negative 6. Are you on number 18? Oh. I was about to say, I think, I think something's not right. How about number 18? Oh. The one I wrote on the top. 5x squared negative 35x equals 2x positive 72. There we go. We we'll multiply the extremes and the means. Their products will be equal. Um, again, on the surface, you look at it. It doesn't appear to be quadratic. I don't see any squares. But once we cross multiply, now I can see it's not just a quadratic, but more specifically class A, complete quadratic. And a complete quadratic equation, we generally want to set the equation equal to zero. zero. Now, if we complete the square, we'll, of course, kick the C out anyway. But it's always good to start by setting it equal to zero, kind of give you a reset opportunity. Um, so uh, what do we do here when we uh, set it equal to zero? Let's go to Kendall. Um, you can pull over 2x as a negative, and then 7,000 over. To get? Um, 3x, right now. Yeah, 3. Well, careful, the 2x comes over as a negative 2x, but that's going to combine with the negative 35x. There is nothing like to the 5x squared. So, 5x squared, and negative 37x, and then 7, 7. All equal to, of course. Yeah. The zero we wanted. How many got to this point? You got to that point. So you did it on the paper. You're just kind of trying to go off, off the head. Okay, any questions getting here? All right, from here, um, I definitely do not want to complete the square. Okay, uh, I could factor or try to factor at least. I mean, there's a lot of ways to split up the 72. So there's a good chance I could figure it out eventually. Or since I have a calculator to take care of the formula anyway, not that you can see the formula very well since it's back there on the back cabinet. But uh, I could try to pull the formula out. And let's go to Maddie. What do you want to do? <clears throat> yeah, so A is, B is, and C is. I think I like Maddie's idea here because, again, there's just so many ways to split this up. I don't really want to mess with it. I just take care of it. Actually, I think, no, no. I thought I just thought of a way to do it. Never mind. Um, so let's plug it into the formula. We've got uh, x is equal to negative b becomes what class? 37. Positive 37. Uh, plus or minus, here's where it gets fun. Calculators are the ready. b squared. What is 37 squared, anyone? 1,369. 1,369, I heard. OK, minus. And I'm going to do the 4ac. Now, it's going to come out to a negative, actually. 4 times a, of course, 20. And then 20 times the negative 72, 1440. negative 1440. But because it's a negative 1440, I'm subtracting. That really becomes a positive, positive all over 2a. Okay. Not bad at all. OK, so here's the real question. If this comes out to a perfect square, I could have factored it. If it doesn't come out to a perfect square, then it's a good thing I wanted the formula. Uh, what is 1,440 plus 1,369? 2,809. 2,809. All right, on your calculator, try to take the square root. Does it work? 53. All right, so that means we could have figured out the factors. How many, in fact, did do this by the factoring method? Okay, a couple of you did. I did. Uh, factoring. That's what I'm saying. How many did use the factoring method? You, you figured out the factors. Okay, several of you did. And uh, again, it obviously must have worked because this came out rational. What's 37 plus 53, class? 90. 90 over 10. And then 37 minus 53 90. over 10. Of course, 90 divided by 10 comes out to an easy answer for x. No. And negative 16 tenths is a little more obnoxious. Let's just reduce it down. Negative 8 fifths. Negative 8 fifths. And there's my two possible answers for x. But remember, in a rational equation, when you come up with those multiple answers, there is a possibility that one of them is an extraneous, extraneous root. There are two things. Right off the top, I could have said, I know x won't be able to equal. x won't be able to equal 0 or 36. Negative 36. Well, neither of my answers is those, so they're both good. All right, how many got 9 and negative 8 fifths regardless of the way in which you solved it? 
All right, question, Maddie. Did you forget to add the inverse to get a positive here? So you came up with a negative, like 90 something? Oh, okay. So a, you, you, you didn't even quite get to this point perfectly. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments on this problem? I'm sorry? You also, the positive 72, you didn't bring it over as the negative. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Well, let's take a look at number 20, where we've got a 3 over x squared minus 1 is equal to 9 over x squared negative 2x negative 3. And uh, when we cross multiply this time, what do we get, Audrey? 3x squared And there is a little something we could do to uh, speed up our work here, Audrey. I could, that could be something even easier. It requires no math at all. Anyone? Cancel the negative nines. Nice. All right, now I could take a three out of everything, I suppose, or I could set it equal to zero first, but we could take out the three. Let's take out the three. All right, and now what would we do? We obviously have what kind of quadratic? It is complete. Now, a lot of students will make the mistake Audrey said is that they look like, well, all I've got are x squares and x's. I don't have any constants. It's not the constant that makes it complete. Go back to my analogy earlier. When I got married to my wife, I x squared, she x. Complete. No kids yet. No little constants running around. Okay? Complete anyway. So it is complete, so I want to set it equal to zero. And uh, so, Audrey. You would. And uh, what do we do? Uh, I'm going to write this as a positive one. So she just hates the zero being on the right hand side or left hand side. Okay, keep going. Um, negative 2x squared. Equal to zero. Of course, then Audrey's going to turn right around and. Out a. Just a 2x? Not a. Negative 2x. I was thinking to just change all the signs real quick, and now you don't have to worry about it anymore. And then maybe factor out a 2x. Um, or you can factor out a negative 2x. That works as well. Leaving us with... X plus 1. And so I've got two factors. I've got a 2x, and I've got an x plus 1. And both of them, class, I need to set equal to 0. When I do, what are my two possible answers, Audrey? 0 and negative 1. 0 and negative 1. But... It's possible that one of these roots is extraneous. How do I check? Well, start by saying that x squared minus 1 can't equal 0, and that x squared negative 2x negative 3 can't equal 0. Coming over here, this is a quadratic also, a quadratic inequality, if you will, but it's complete or incomplete class. And this is where my analogy breaks down. Where'd the kid come from? I don't know. Okay, but we got uh, we got uh, maybe it's like you know maybe you know an older brother taking care of a younger sister. I don't know. Anyway, but we've got uh, we've got the x squared, but he's incomplete. Okay, and so we're going to kick out the one as a positive. Take the square root x. So the x cannot equal or positive or negative one. Thoughts? Can't. There goes that one. Yeah, or that negative one, rather. Uh, then coming over here, complete. Looks like it should factor x and x, positive, negative, one and three. And sure enough, that checks out to where x cannot equal. Negative one or three. Well, we already said negative one didn't work, but uh, three wouldn't work either. So apparently, x only equals zero. How many can deduce that x only could equal zero? How many still have the negative one because you forgot to check? All right. Anyone not get zero or negative one? You just really strong. Okay. Do you, does it make sense now? Okay. Any questions at all? Any questions at all on quadratics or rational that become quadratic, where you could potentially have extraneous answers, or as we showed before, we could have complex answers. Any questions on those at all? All right. Well, let's review a little bit here. Page 111 in your textbooks. <clears throat> So just across the page from where we just were, page 111. And um, number seven, they want us to add some complex numbers together. And what do we do to add complex numbers? Michael? Um, you add. Sorry. I don't know. 
Don't you just add? You kind of do. You know, true to like terms, basically. In other words, add the reals together and add the imaginaries together. And what do we get on number seven when I add those complex numbers, Michael? You get negative four plus negative eleven i. Oh, not minus negative. Oh, Michael. Yeah. You didn't said, just add. You tried to make it hard. You tried to add the inverse. inverse. Yeah, but there's no reason to add the inverse on number seven because uh, it's just it's just add. So you had it right the first time. What do we get? Negative four. No, 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 no. We we had the idea of just just add when you said just add, but oh. you didn't just add. So what should we have gotten on number seven if we do what you originally said, which is just add? Um, you know, a plus five i. Good. A positive five i is excellent. Good. Uh, number nine. I see square roots and negatives. Class. Pull out your eye. What do I rewrite number nine as, Kendall? Um, I times square root of four, and then times I times square root of sixteen. Of course, we could we could do better than that in our head because we're pretty good with this stuff. So maybe you know, a step further. Two i times four. Good. Two i times four i gives. Yeah. I times i. Ah, oh, so two i times four i would give us. Um, four times squared. No, four i times two i would give us eight i squared. Eight i squared. But of course, class, we know i squared just equals negative one. So that becomes negative, negative eight for number nine. Do number eleven at your seats. How do we simplify the square root of the negative 9, first of all, Genesis? Nine. Well, the square root of 9 becomes 3i. But then there's that square root of negative 27. Obviously, we know because we see square root of negative, we've got to pull out the i. But we also need to factor the 27. Because unlike the square root of negative 9, where, OK, you pull out the i, you know the square root of 9 is 3. 27, you can't take the square root of. Nine. So we end up with. Good, and we end up multiplying these together, a 3i times a square, or times 3i squared of 3, to get initially. But since we know i squared is, we just get. I suppose, for that matter, you could pull out the i in both cases and get a really big number. You could go i squared times the square root of anybody. Do it that way, possibly. 243, and then you're like, well, what square is in 243? Well, it's 81 and 3, and that gives you the negative 1, the 9, and the square root of 3. Eh, something easy like this. I, I just assume simplifying down quicker. How many, regardless of the way you did it, got the negative 9 square root of 3? Any questions on that? Um, number 13, we're multiplying complex numbers together. How do we multiply complex numbers, Maddie? Foil. And uh, first outer, inner, last again. Watch for the last to become real. At your seats, take just a moment. I was all primed for a foil, but I can't. You said it perfectly. Foil. I think it's the wrong foil. Oh. <laughs> I think that's why it throws me off with the ATM thing, because I'm like, you talk so well. Anyway, all right, so coming over here, Maddie, what did you get for your final answer? 26, negative 8i. You initially a 21, you got the positive 7, the negative 15i, so negative 8i. Then the end is that negative 5i squared, which since that's negative 1, that becomes positive 5, and that's where she got the 26. And we got the same answer on number 13, 26, negative 8i. Do number 15, very similar problem. And what did you get for your answer, Audrey? Um, 38 minus 18. Good, 38, negative 18i. How many have the same answer on this one? 
All right, check your work. First is 18. Outer is a negative 12, or positive 12i. Inner is a negative 30. So negative 30, positive 12 gives negative 18i. Then your last is a negative 20i squared. Again, that's negative 1. That's positive 20. That's where the 38 came from with the negative 18i. Questions 15? Number 17, we're dividing by a real number, a 4. So all we got to do, class, is divide by the 4. Let, let, it, let it be easy. If you look across the way, number 18, you would divide by an imaginary number, and you can't do that. What do you do if you're trying to divide by an imaginary number, Brandon? On top and bottom is what you mean by that, right? Multiply top and bottom by the i. And then looking down at 19 and 20, you've got complex divisors, complex denominators. What would we do there, Abby? Multiply by the conjugate. There you'd have to multiply by the conjugate. At your seats, do 17 and 19. 17 and 19. Brandon, on number 17, what did you get when you divided by 4? 1 minus 0. Really couldn't get much easier, right? How many got the same thing? 1 negative 3, I. And then coming over here, Abby, you said to multiply by the conjugate. What is the conjugate of 3 positive 2, I? 3 negative 2, I. And I multiply that by the denominator. Um, 9 negative 4, I squared. Which, uh, of course, that becomes a negative 1. So we really end up with... Um, right, 9 plus 4 becomes a 13. But what you do to the bottom? You have to the top. So I'm also going to multiply the top by? Uh, 3 negative 2. And here I'm going to have to FOIL to get? Um, 24 negative 22i negative 4. Good. Initially positive 4i squared, but that becomes a 4 times negative 1 or negative 4. So we end up within our numerator? Uh, 20 negative 22i. And again, I'll leave the answer just like this. Again, you may have a math teacher later on in your life, uh, college math or something, who insists on separating it out. Super easy to do, okay? So that I just want to prepare you for whatever you may see later, but it's not hard to separate that into two separate fractions. How many had either this answer or perhaps you went to the extra trouble to get that answer? All right, questions on this. I want you to do numbers 8 through 20 to even now. They're on page 111. Yep, page 111. Page I, I, I. That's what it looks like at the bottom. Page three.
One more minute to be finishing up, and then we'll go over these together. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at these answers. And number eight, what do I need to do here, Genesis? The things that are similar. Kind of, but the symbol it has there, it tells me to subtract. But I don't inverse. subtract. Add the inverse. There we go. What do we get when we add the inverse? Six minus 13i. Six, negative 13i is correct. Number 10, when we multiply those two imaginary values together, what do we end up with, Abby? Um, negative 12. Negative 12, very good. Number 12, what do we get when we multiply those together, Kendall? Um, negative 1 times 3, 1 times 26. Initially, yes, um, but I feel like surely a number that big has got to have something in it we can work with, right? Um, well, is 63 a square, though? But there is a square in 63. Kendall, 63. Nine times... Seven, right? So I could factor this into nine times seven times two. So at least I can take the square to the nine. Mm -hmm. Pull out a three. So it's a negative one times the three to get mm -hmm. times the square root of the seven and the two, or in other words, 14. 14. And that would be the final reduction if you were to do nine and 14. Uh, but hey, it's not a problem to kind of work your way there until you bump into a square somewhere. Uh, but there we go. How many got the negative three square to 14? Anyone like Kendall leave it here, just didn't see the reducing, didn't see the 9. All right, question on that? By the way, some of the digits, remember, 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9, so you know there's a 9 in there. Um, number 14, we have to foil those two complex numbers, Brandon. 19 plus 18i. 19 positive 18i. Number 16, we also have to foil there, Michael. Uh, you get 36 plus 23i. We have 36 positive 23i. Number 18, remind us again, what do we have to do here, Maddie? I'm sorry? Good, multiply top and bottom by the i so that instead of a 5i, we multiply by the i in the bottom. It gives us 5i squared, but since i squared is negative 1, it really becomes negative 5. And then up here, we also have to multiply the i. I'm going to write at the beginning here so it's easier to see the distribution. But of course, the negative 15 I squared just becomes a positive 15. And then we can divide each of these by the negative 5 separately. 
Negative three. Negative three. And I like this. You put the real first, then the negative i second. And we got all the way down to negative three, negative i, as did Maddie. Excellent. And uh, number 20. Uh, what did we have to do on this one here? And there's somebody I haven't called on yet. And I must be tired. I can't remember who I haven't picked on yet. Let's go. So, Audrey, have I called on you yet? I don't think so either. I think it's I think it's Audrey. Number twenty, Audrey. Uh, what do we do here? Well, minus i squared means twenty five minus negative one. So it ends up becoming a 26 in the denominator. Um, but of course, we don't just multiply the 5 negative i by the uh, denominator right. to get positive 59, you said? I? Good. Initially, negative 14 i squared, but she knows that's going to become positive 14. So. And I believe that is correct. Seems correct to me. And it is correct. All right. And uh, how many got that for number 20? Did anyone go 7 for 7 on these problems? You got all of them. All right. 6 for 7. You just missed 1. All right. The one that you all missed, whichever one that was, do we understand it or do we need to see it worked? How many say, I got it now? I'm good. You give me a quiz right now. I would do fantastic on it. Do you remember our four fundamental powers of I, by the way? I to the first is I. I squared is. Negative one I cubed is. Negative I. I to the fourth is. One. What if I had something bigger than I to the fourth? Take out however many fourths you can get, right? Well, we're going to have a quiz in our next lesson over that. For now, let's go ahead and take a look at some word problems together. And... Uh, <laughs> All right, I just have way too much fun messing with people's minds. I want to give you a little bit more practice with this, just to make sure we've really got it. So you'll be practicing in your homework this evening with some of this. For now, though, let's go ahead and look at some word problems together. Go ahead and read this word problem for us, if you would. Michael. A boy is three times as old as his sister. In six years, he will be only twice as old. How old is each now? How many unknowns do we have in this problem? Two. Two, and they are? The boy and the girl. The boy and the girl, or sister. I'm going to say sis. And um, the very first sentence compares them to each other when it says the boy is three times as old as his sister. So, class, who gets to be X? Sister. The sister. And it says the boy is three times as old. So, class, we represent the boy? Three X. But then we go traveling through time. And this is where this problem is different from all the other word problems we've done so far this year. We have two unknowns, but we have two different scenarios present. We have the present, or since I'm too lazy to write that word, we have now. He is three times as old. But it also travels into the future. In six years. Well, I don't want to make this seem a little too frightening for you, but what happens to people in six years? He gets older. How much older, Audrey? Six years older. Now, for some of you, that means college graduation, marriage, possibly even children for some of you. It wouldn't be a stretch to believe. <laughs> uh, it could happen to you. A lot could happen in six years. But we know this. I don't know that any of you will be married in six years. I don't know that any of you will, hopefully you will, graduate college in six years. I don't know that any... But I do know you'll all be six years older if you're not dead. And your physical body may be decaying in the grave even, but it would still be six years older, right? Everybody gets six years older. So in the future, I know that the sister is going to be six years older than she is right now. So how should it represent the sister's future age? X plus six. And what about the boy's future age? 3x plus 6. We just do a plus 6 to both of them. Because as you go 6 years into the future, they both get 6 years older. And I'm going to use a little chart here, a little table if you want to call it that, to separate the now from the future. So far, so good? Now, 
that in six years, this prepositional phrase, if you'll pardon the use of English class here, mm -hmm. is the transitional statement that separates the two columns. And it gives up, puts us now here. So it says, in six years, and then it gives us the equation. He will be twice as old, right? Who is the he talking about, class? Mm -hmm. The boy. But it's not the now boy, because we've traveled into the future. It's future boy. So when it says he, I should write class e. 3x plus 6, because that's boy, that's he. Then it says will be. That's my linking verb, if you'll pardon the use of English class, but I've told you linking verbs, that's what gives you your equal sign. He, the boy, the 3x plus 6, will be or equals, and it says only twice as old. Well, twice as old means you multiply something by 2. But it doesn't tell us what to multiply by 2. It says it's twice as old. Well, it's implied that he's going to be twice as old as who? His, his, his sister. He, the boy, the 3x plus 6, not this boy, he's, he's gone past. We're in the future now. Okay? This boy will be equals, there's your verb, twice as old as the sister. But remember, she's time traveled too. So she is now not x. She is now he will be twice as old. A, a, a elliptical clause here as his sister is. Does that make sense? All right, you like the use of the English class there. Yeah, okay. So to solve the equation class, well, we just distribute the two to get three x plus six equals. Two x plus one. And we get rid of the little x by turning it into a negative two x over here to get x. And we send the positive six over as a, to get six. And apparently, how old is the sister right now? Six. Right now she's six, and right now the boy is 18. 18. But when we time travel into the future, how old is the boy going to be in six years? 24. He's going to be 24, and the sister's going to be 12. He's three times as old now. He's only going to be twice as old in the future. Now. Notice how the word question's worded. How old is each now? These are my answers. This is a great way to check, but these are the answers we're interested in because it says how old is each now. Had it said how old will each be in six years, then I would use those answers. Make sense? How many remember doing these in Algebra 1? How many say, oh my. <laughs> how many say, I don't remember doing it, but it seems to make sense at least, All right, other than the time travel bit? It's going to happen to you too one day. All right, questions on this. Let's take a look at one more. Any day now. Oh, and this has nothing whatsoever to do with, uh, with ages. So we totally changed gears here. And uh, go ahead and read this for us if you would. Genesis. Genesis man bought 15 apples at the store for 8 $8.30, not including tax. Red Delicious costs 2 cents each, and Gold Delicious costs 70 cents. All right. In case you didn't know, there's a ton of different kinds of apples, right? Yeah. And uh, Fuji apples, Granny Smith. I don't know if this is who this is. That's Granny. I don't know. There's Granny Smith, um, the Pink Lady, the Caramel Apple is a type of apple per se. It's usually oil. <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, the Red Delicious, I've always found, are not really delicious at all. They look pretty, but they, they really don't taste that good. But the skin is bitter. And anyway, I don't, the Golden Delicious, I don't care for as much either. But anyway. Uh, so how many unknowns do we have here, Genesis? Two, and they are the red and the golden. Because I'm way too lazy to write delicious. And um, it tells me she bought 15 apples. Now, class, was that 15 red delicious or 15 golden delicious? Yes, 15 total. Not 15 of each, but 15 total. I want you to write this in your notes. If you ever have two unknowns, so let's just put it, if you have two unknowns and you are given a total... If you have two unknowns and you are given a total, make one unknown x and the other total minus x. We can arrive at this logically. Let's say only one apple was red delicious. How many does that leave for golden delicious? 14. 15 minus 1 is 14. But if seven of them were red delicious, class, that means people. 
15 apples, right? That's what it says. Mm -hmm. If seven are red delicious, how many must have been gold delicious? Eight. Eight, right? Eight. 15 minus seven is eight. Mm -hmm. What if she bought a dozen red delicious apples? Three. Three. You take the 15 minus however many the one is. So if I don't know the number of red delicious apples, I can just call that X. But golden delicious is going to be 15 minus whatever that is. The total minus X. If you have two unknowns and you're given a total, make one unknown X and the other total minus X. But that's not the only difference. The number of red and golden delicious apples is different. It has to be, unless you buy half apples at the store. But there's another thing that's different about them. They don't cost the same amount of money at the store either. And here again, like the previous problem, we're going to need to set up a little bit of a chart. We're going to have our number in this column and the price or the value in the next. What's the value of a red delicious apple? 50 cents. We're going to say 0.5. And the value of a golden delicious apple, 70 cents or 0.7. But we know this. If I bought one red delicious apple, 50 cents a piece, then that's how much money? 50 cents. Two red delicious apples, 50 cents a piece, a dollar. Five red delicious apples, 50 cents a piece, 250. How do we figure out the number? Multiplication, thank you. So if I wanted to represent the total money spent just on red delicious apples, I take the number of red delicious apples times 50 cents each. Well, let's do it. X apples times 50 cents each gives 0.5x. And 15 minus X apples at 70 cents each gives 0.7 times 15 minus X. Does that make sense? Following so far? Make sure I'm still on the screen. I am. So this is all the money that Mrs. Smith, who also makes pies, by the way, the freezer section. Yeah. Anyway, this is the anyway. Um, but uh, if this is all the money Mrs. Smith spent on red delicious apples, and this is all the money she spent on golden delicious apples. Uh, all right. If this is all the money she spent on golden delicious apples, and it tells me she spent how much money? No, she didn't spend fifteen bucks. Eight thirty. I can take the money she spent doing this with me on the red plus the money she spent on the golden, and that's going to equal all the money she spent put together. Does that make sense? So we have the numbers are different and the values are different, but if I just multiply number times value, I'll get total value. And if you add total values together, you get the total at the bottom of the receipt, not including tax. To solve your class, I'd probably move the decimal over once everywhere to get 5, 7, and 83. Let's distribute the 7 to get 105, negative 7x equals 83. Let's combine the x's to get. It would help if you were working it on your paper right now, Abby. Negative 2x. Let's also ditch the 105 as a negative 105. Pair that with a positive 83. You can use your calculator, of course. We move the 105 over as a negative. Yeah, negative 22. This is on your paper, since you're working this with me. And then we divide both sides by negative 2 to get x is equal to 11. 11. So apparently she bought 11 red delicious apples and just four golden delicious apples. We'll be working problems like these in the next several days. Your homework for this evening is to do pages 115 to 116. Pages 115 to 116, do the review, numbers 1 to 21, the odd. Pages 115 to 116, do the review, 1 to 21, the odd. And have a wonderful rest of your day.